Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, this is Clay Ramage. We have another Goodwill bins haul today. Obviously you see that in the thumbnail that that's what we're going to do. Um, but yeah, I went to the bins this morning, had a good time. Found some great stuff for uh, resale. Um, and another eclectic mix. What can I say? I just like all these different things that I find at the bins as I pick them up and put them in there. And uh, so yeah, so if you're new to our channel, welcome. Uh, I'm a part-time reseller, uh, reselling on eBay. I have a booth at an antique store in downtown Hopkins, Minnesota called the Pink Elephant. Great store. If you're in the area, stop by, please. And, uh, uh, and then I also, you know, sometimes larger items I sell on Facebook Marketplace or whatever locally. And uh, obviously I sell some to you guys as well which is great, and I greatly appreciate that. Um, but before we get into the haul today, I wanted to just um, do a follow-up on something from my last Goodwill Bins haul last week, um, which was, you guys saw, I picked up all of them, all of these Serta sheep, and I was laughing through most of them. Um, and I had several people ask, are they, are they sellable? Can you sell them? Um, just so you know, I have already sold almost half of them um, within a few days of them. Uh, one, I sold several to uh, some viewers, so thank you very much for buying those, but I've also sold them on eBay. I have them all listed on eBay now, except for this particular one, number 29, and the reason I didn't list him is because the letters on this side, they're really poorly done. So I thought, well, he's only one, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so I might just keep him as a nostalgia piece. <laughs> Anyway, so yes, Serta counting sheep are collectible, and especially if you get the big ones. Um, these were all small. Now, that was the mistake I made when I picked these up. There were two large ones in the bins, and I didn't take those just because I thought, oh, they're so big, they're so heavy. Well, I looked them up when I got home, and they're worth, you know, $150 to $250. So I should have picked those up. But you live and learn. So now I'll know to look for those in the future. But uh, yeah. So it's a good time. But I we've had great fun with these sheep. They're worth every penny I spent, even if I didn't sell one. Because <laughs> they've been so much fun. Anyway, um, let's get into today's haul. I'll get one of the big things out of the way first. I found this vintage bag. It's not marked as far as a label or anything on the outside. Um, it's a vintage bag, I would say from the 70s. Um, and, you know, just based on the material, the vinyl lining the um what i would call naga hide it's not leather it's uh you know back in my day uh early days we called it naga hide which is a little higher quality vinyl um more durable because this is extremely durable it's not cracking um there is some wear on the handle where the coloring has come off um so this bag was used it is quite dirty as well if you look at it um, so we're, I'm actually going to use this as a how-to one, see if we can't clean up most of that. But, and I can't really show you this on camera, but inside at the very bottom of the bag, I don't think you can see it. Anyway, there's a little tag, and this is one of the reasons why, even if it's not marked on the outside, always check the tag, because inside this says, uh, made expressly for Fabergé in the Republic of China. So this particular bag is a Fabergé, vintage Fabergé tote bag. Um, and as you know, Carl Fabergé is a famous designer. You know, his stuff is quite collectible. I looked and there are none online um, of this particular style. There are several vintage ones. Again, not very many, just a couple um, of Fabergé. Um, so we will see if we can't clean this up and sell this. The only, there is couple small spots of wear along the bottom but again it's not worn through it's just you can see it's starting to wear and one of the feet is cracked so and it's dirty so there are some condition issues and i'm trying not to buy stuff that i have to work on but i thought that would be a great example and it could be worth you know some good money 40 50 dollars once it's all cleaned up and in good shape all right so what else i got i got some floral foam uh, I use these just more for display purposes, like down at the Pink Elephant, when we have a little vase or something, and I have some artificial flowers, I'll just use these to stick the flowers in there to give a little um, more pizzazz, kind of a decorating 
kind of style. Um, and I found this plate. It's a nice burnt orange color, kind of matches my jumper. Um, and on the back, it's marked Red Wing. So that's why I picked it up. Red Wing uh, pottery is made in Red Wing, Minnesota, which is a couple hours from where I live. It's collectible around here. And again, I don't know the vintage of this plate, but I do think it's probably from the 50s or 60s. It's an older plate. I'll have to look up the mark and see what years they were using that mark. So, but yeah. And again, I pay 49 cents for that. So that's a great deal, one way or the other. Uh, found this vintage dollhouse rug, uh, rag rug. Thought it was pretty cool. Very well done. Hand stitched that all together. And I finally found another piece of crew work. I have been looking and looking and haven't been able to find any. Now, this particular one was in a frame, and you can see it's a little wrinkled. It was not framed very well, and the, it was a terrible frame. Um, so I took it out of the frame and just bought this and not the frame because I didn't want to pay extra money for an ugly frame. So I will either reframe this or try to sell it as is. Some people like to do their own frames, but I have some frames that that'll fit in. So I'll probably just frame it myself and go that way. But these sell really well down at the Pink Elephant. I've sold every single one that I've put down there and usually somewhere between $15, $20, 25 depending upon its size and, you know, what it looks like. This one I'll probably do like $18 on. It's a pretty good price. Um, man, I couldn't believe this was still in the bins. This lovely, lovely little, um, I believe this was designed as a bedside lamp. Um, so like when you're laying in bed and you want to read, this would be hanging on the wall. It is, does have a cord to plug in, so it's not a wall mount fixture. It's a, uh, you know, it is designed to mount on the wall, but not a permanent hardwired fixture. Um, there's no shade, but just look at that. I just think it screams 1920s into the 30s. Just a beautiful little floral, you know, with the trellis design on there. So, and electronics, you pay 99 cents. So I paid 99 cents for this. This is going to go on eBay. And again, those type of vintage lights, I've had great luck. And they sell very quickly for me. Picked up some tissue paper. Uh, again, I pick them up at the bins because it's really inexpensive. I don't pay much for them. And... I use those to wrap stuff when I ship them. I picked up this little corner corbel um, for a door frame. Somebody used it as a craft project, put a little saying on there and stuck a bird and some music on top with a feather. That's fine and they put a wall hanger on it. But I know that people also buy these when they're restoring houses. And um, you know, in the Twin Cities, there's a lot of older houses that use these type of corners on their interior door work. So I will, take off these extra pieces and sell this down at the pink elephant it's just a just a piece of wooden trim picked up this little picture this is printed and then glued on a piece of board um i thought it was a darling little picture again it's very light i didn't pay much probably a quarter for it um but again we've been selling a lot of artwork uh, between nicole and i nicole north garden um which you can watch her channel which i'll list down below um in our booth so artwork is hot and i guess it must be because people are have walls that they want to cover or something because yeah i'm amazed at how much they, how much artwork i sell both on ebay and down at the pink elephant so it goes in both places so a lot of people are looking for it i found this vintage um wooden beaded bag this is actually made in japan the interior is in great shape um the exterior you know it does show some signs of wear especially around the zipper where the beads are sewn onto them, but still just a nice little vintage bag, which I'll clean up a little bit and put down at the pink elephant, I think. Um, Cause I just think it's kind of a fun. You don't see the wooden beads too much. This, I bought a flower vase, which I usually stay away from clear glass and uh, especially flower vases. Cause yeah, well, there's just not much market there. But this, look at this label on there. It says um, Anderson florist. Of course, we're in Minnesota, so Anderson's a common name up here. Um, it says, Anderson Florist in Greenhouses, Alexandria, Minnesota. Telephone number R035115. So I bought it because of that label that's taped on there. And I'm going to leave that label on there, put it down at the Pink Elephant. You know, again, not probably $6 I'll put on it, but because it's got the label and it's a local piece, 
local to Minnesota. I think that that should do pretty good. Um, saw this. Peanuts are always collectible. Saw this coffee mug. I do some with coffee mugs, but I loved Snoopy. Cookie break. Absolutely. And if it said coffee break, I would have got it then too. Either one. Um, well, I just got a bunch of littles here. Um, okay. And this is the creepy piece I picked up today. <laughs> I call it the creep factor. But it's really cool, and these are um, quite sellable. It's a crocodile head, a real crocodile head. Now, this is a younger crocodile, probably a couple years old, um, that's been taxidermied. And they sell these in Florida as collector souvenirs. Um, and it's got felt paper on the back or the bottom. Um, but yeah, and these sell from $15 to $20 on eBay regularly, consistently. So I'm going to put this actually down at the pink elephant because, again, unusual stuff like this sells pretty well down there. So I'm going to do that. Um, I picked up Shades of Autumn salt and pepper shakers. This is, these are Avon items. I don't normally don't do much with Avon, but I just really like these. This set, I think for fall, it'll be really nice. It's a squash and a pumpkin salt and pepper shakers. So it's the only original box. Not much else needs to be said about those. Again, sometimes I just like picking up little things like that. That's filler. Um, I did find a bag of jewelry bits and beading supplies. I haven't looked through this, so we'll look through this quickly together. Um, so there's a bag of looks like glass beads. There's another one of some glass beads, looks like. This is just, you know, this is miscellaneous beads of different times. Um, yep, these are some more. Just a lot of miscellaneous beads. So I'll put these down. Oh, these are some large glass beads. These are really pretty, actually. You can't see through that plastic because that's pretty ugly. Um, wow, look at that. Look at that glass bead. I don't know quite how to... This camera doesn't always adjust really well to focus. Um, so yeah, so there's some... Beautiful ones in there. Oh, yep, yeah, I already showed those. Some wooden ones. Here's some more wooden round ones. Oh, that's a, looks like a bracelet that's broken. Parts of a bracelet. Oh, here's a vintage screw on earring. So there's some. Oh, here's another. I don't know what this was. But yeah, just another. Mm -hmm. little dangly thing oh this is another earring you know just different little jewelry parts there's a nice little pendant now this one actually looks more vintage it's actually got all of its rhinestones in it too it's kind of cool I like that one and then just some more miscellaneous little parts oh that's a that's a nice pendant So yeah, so again, I picked this up, I'll put this, I don't know how I'm going to sell this. Um, oh, there's a wooden, I don't know, that's small for a choker, it's big for a, I don't know what that would be. You should wear it on your forearm. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'll probably just lock these up and put these down at the pink elephant I had in my miscellaneous um, box. All right. Uh, and you want to keep watching because I'll show you my high dollar item at the very end, which we'll get to here pretty quickly. Um, I found these Boy Scout, um, handkerchief ties. There were three of them. I was never a Boy Scout, so I don't know really. One's a bear, one's a wolf, and this one is a tiger. So I believe they, they do indicate something. I'm not sure what, because I'm not a Boy Scout and never really did much with them, but I know that they're collectible. So, um, and then I found this, this is a very small bracelet, but it's kind of cool, copper and brass and silver toned, just like the design on that. That was hanging loose. 
picked up some leather strapping. I was talking to somebody the other day about fixing something, and I said you can buy, you know, the leather straps, and you can, you know, do shoelet. I think it was a, with regard to some shoes. That's exactly what it was, actually. And saying, you know, you want to get, you can buy the leather strips, and that's what this is. So I went ahead and bought that. I found this little bin of kittens, and this one. Um, I believe this one could be a Lefton piece. It's got the mark, the number on the bottom, which is pretty common for Lefton. Sometimes Home Co. too. Um, but this one's very, very nicely painted. Um, I picked up this deer, but I didn't realize he's missing an ear. So, I got a broken, broken deer. Um, and there's another little kitty. I don't know, I've been selling a lot of little cat figurines on the pink elephant, so I thought, oh... Here's some more. I don't have any of these kinds, so there's two more matching ones. So we'll put those down there, and then this is the one that I saw first, because he's a nice big one. But isn't he just wonderful? Love this cat. There was a label on the bottom that's no longer on there, so I don't know if that was the manufacturer's label or somebody just put something on there, but he's wonderful shape, no chips or cracks. So somebody will like that kitty kitty figure and then i found this plate and i was all excited it's a burger jones plate i don't know who burger jones is but there is one of these listed on ebay for 39.99 i was like "Ooh, it's a great score until i turned it on the back i didn't realize when i picked it up that there's this huge chip out of it <laughs> so yeah. yeah and that's two pieces now that i picked up that were broken today um in the past, I showed you guys a that I pick up second place trophies because I give this to different people saying, um, friends of mine, saying that you're always second to Jesus. Jesus is first, so you'll never have first place. You'll always come in second place. So I pick these up when I find them. This one happens to be a tennis one, which I like playing tennis. And I have a number of friends who like playing tennis. So that was fun. I was really surprised this was in the bins. This is a M.A. Hadley Bowl. The snowman bowl. Um, it's the large serving bowl. And I believe this is like the 12 inch bowl, uh, 11 inch. Um, so I obviously I paid up for this because I had to pay by the pound for it. Um, so I probably paid about five dollars for this. But you know, these are highly collectible, they sell quickly, and uh, you know, I should be able to get 20 to 25 dollars out of this very quickly, if not a little more. I'm not, I didn't do a lot of research on. The large bowls. I know I've sold, you know, the smaller bowls and plates and stuff fairly quickly. I have to look to see if the larger snowman bowl. And right now, people might not be in the mood for, mood for snowman. But, all right, just a couple more items. This is a print that I found. It's a, it's a, the original is a batik. This is actually a print of the original batik. So it looks like a batik, but it's not really fabric. Uh, it's it's a print of that, but it is still a limited edition. This is number four of 25. This particular artist, Zuckerman, she's out of Maryland. Um, I couldn't find any solds on her, but it's just a cute picture. Again, we sell are selling a lot down at the Pink Elephant, and I thought this could be something that could sell well. Teddy bears are always collectible. He's very cute. All right, and the last item was the one that really surprised me, but you guys know me i've been watching any length of time i always pick up artwork because art is one of the best investments you can make and can give you the best returns so i'm always picking it up especially at the bins because i pay almost nothing for it like i this is probably about 50 cents um and it's a picture of a cat i don't know how well it shows up but it's still wrapped in plastic with the original matting it's uh the name on here is weidman and it's dated 1970 so it's 50 years old. Um, it's a hand screened print. It still has the label on the back. This particular artist, David Weidman, is uh, highly collectible. He sold listings on eBay are anywhere from $150 to $250. Um, most of those were framed. So not being framed, it'll be a little less, but it's easier for me to ship without it being framed. Now the, you know, it does have a few dings. Um, the mat itself is in really good shape. It's just the corners, like this upper corner that got bent, but the backing board got bent a little bit. Um, and the, it's got a little 
wave there. So yeah, so I always recommend, you know, picking up art, artwork, prints. Like this is an original piece of art. Um, just because you never know. I picked up numerous prints like this that can be worth hundreds of dollars. And original artwork at the bins, which I'm still amazed that they put it out in the bins. But I'm very grateful because it helps me make money. And uh, so hopefully um, we can get that listed here and sold very quickly. But that's our great haul for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for uh, keeping up with me and uh, listening to my crazy stories. But um, yeah, catch you guys next time. Bye.